Hello there. I'm now going to be showing you how to do a sperm freeze right from the time a sample is received in the laboratory. So as I explained earlier in the video uh, titled sperm preparation, you would get a sperm sample in one of these pots which is clearly labelled with the patient details. Of course it will be the male's details. And on this occasion, unlike before where I said that all the tubes are labelled with the female's name because you are trying to create a fresh process in the lab whereby you're preparing the sperm for insemination at that point. Here it's a bit different because the sperm has been received and the sperm has to be frozen for the man. So all the labeling would have to be done as if it's done for the man. So you would typically label the vial. This is a vial that is going to be holding the sperm for freezing. And of course uh, what we would do is make multiple vials like this. So you would fill this vial with a maximum of around 1.5 mils of the sperm and the cryomedia uh, or the concoction that we will show you how to make. So you would label this with um, the patient's name. Say Joe Willis and his number is 1130 and his date of birth is 5. 782. Okay, so this is typically, and you also need to write the date of freeze, say 16, 5, 19. Because a patient may freeze multiple vials, so you each of the vials or each of the samples needs to be fully traceable to the date that it was produced. So we know that as part of the, the whole European Cells and Tissue Directives, if a sperm donor is freezing samples, you also have to apply the single European code to it, which is a traceable code that will link the sample to the clinic and also the specifics of uh, the donor and at the same time, the date it was produced as well. So uh, there's a lot of regulation that's involved, especially if you're freezing for donor sperm, but typically let's assume we're freezing for a couple here, whereby the man may have problems producing a semen sample on the day or he may not even be available uh, on the day to produce a sample he may be traveling so sperm freezing is what you have the only option with it must be remembered that when you're freezing sperm for treatment you need to counsel the patients that almost 50 percent of the sperm will not survive the freezing thawing process a fresh sample is always the best sample but it Again, if you're using donor sperm, you cannot use fresh donor sperm because everything needs to be quarantined. And the only thing you can use with donor sperm is frozen samples. So again, going back to the fact that we are showing you how to prepare a sample for freezing for a couple where we're going to be using autologous donation or autologous treatment. We would get the sperm sample. We would then add the cryopreservation media. Now, this is the sperm cryopreservation media. What this media has in there, it has got a high concentration of uh, uh, glycerol and also glucose or sucrose, a polysaccharide. So this media has got high concentration of glycerol. Glycerol is the cryoprotectant that is used for sperm freezing. So whatever the volume that you have in there, say typically you had 3 mils or 4 mils of semen, you would take one third of that volume, so say one mil. If it's a three mil semen, you would take one mil of the sperm cryoprotectant. It really depends on which cryoprotectant you're using, so you need to check with the company that you're buying the cryoprotectant media from, the sperm cryoprotectant media, in terms of how concentrated it is. This is a super concentrated uh, solution, so you only use it at the dilution factor of one third of cryomedia to so what one third um, one third part of cryomedia to one part of semen but there are some cryomedias which use one to one dilution so one part of cryomedia to one part of semen so we will take one third of the cryomedia or one mil of the cryomedia and add it to our three mils of semen in a very aseptic manner. The way that cryoprotectant has to be added is in a very dropwise manner with continuous agitation or shaking just so that there is no osmotic shock to the sperm. So very gradually you have to add drop by drop of cryo 
to the semen and keep on shaking it like that till you have added the full lot of cryoprotectant in there. So again very gradually add all the cryoprotectant and let the sperm be with the cryo or mix with the cryo for at least 10 minutes before you load the vial. So after 10 minutes when the sperm and the cryomedia have had time to equilibrate or the cryomedia has had an impact on dehydrating the sperm, you would open your vial or multiple vials at this point if, if you have three mils. You would load your sperm cryo mix into the vial and you would close this vial and now it is ready to be vapor frozen. The way sperm is frozen, it is frozen in a vapor phase of liquid nitrogen. So here we have our vapor phase bath or cryo bath ready. You can see in there it's a very simple system. You fill it to a level of liquid nitrogen. I would say one third of the dewer is filled with liquid nitrogen. You have these cryocanes. You don't want to put it right at the level of liquid, but you just want to put it so that the vial is sitting on top of the liquid level there. So the whole idea is that it is being cooled very gradually with time. So you leave this with the lid on for about 20 min uh, for about 30 to 40 minutes in a vapor phase. And after 30 to 40 minutes, you would come back and you would see the suspension would be fully frozen, solidified. You would remove the vials and you would dunk it straight into liquid nitrogen, which you can see and that's what we have just done. We've taken the vial out and put it straight into liquid nitrogen. The vial is now ready to go into your permanent cryo tank or your permanent storage solution and stay in a liquid phase of uh, liquid nitrogen depending. Some labs prepare, prefer to use a vapor phase storage system. Some labs prefer to use a liquid based storage system. But the idea is to store it at about minus 100 to minus 196 degrees C. So that is cold freezing and I hope that was good. Thank you.